Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going back to the old Mad Lad roots. We're going to be playing a little bit of Jank in Historic Best of One. Today we're going to be playing a list that we have sort of played before, but we played a different variant of it, and I think that Zendikar Rising and uh, Future Historic Anthologies, I think, and maybe Jumpstart. Actually, I don't know how many sets have come out since we last played it, but anyway, my point is there's been lots of cards that have actually added pieces to this deck, made it a little bit more consistent, and made it a little bit more entertaining when it finally gets to go and combo off. Before we get into it, though, let's open up some packs. Chat is my good lucky charm, and we've got two Zendikar Rising packs today, so let's see if I can get some good rares out of this. I think I'm missing some pathways, so I'd like to see some of them. Ancient Green Warden. It's fine. It's fine. Like something a little bit better though, chat. If you, if you wanna rub your fingers together, give me, give me that good look. You ready? All right. That's fine. Nissa of Shadow Bows. Not got a chance to play with this card yet, but I'm very excited to give it a good old shot in standard at some point. I think it's a reasonable card. It's not a great card, uh, but it's it's where I would honestly want Planeswalker power levels to be. So if we can maintain this power level. Fantastic. Anyway, today, for those who are more interested, we're going to be playing a blue-red Death Bella Warcry combo list. So it's built around this wonderful 8-mana card over here. It says, search your library for up to 4 Minotaur creature cards with different names, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So basically, we need 4 unique Minotaurs in our deck in order to maximize the value of Death Bella Warcry. We're going to be manipulating this card a little bit uh, using Arcane Adaptation. Y'all know this is one of my favorite cards in blue because uh, I play it a lot. Uh, three mana for an enchantment. As Arcane Adaptation enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. We're going to choose Minotaur so that all creatures are Minotaurs in addition to their other types. And that includes cards that are in our deck and anywhere else essentially. So in our deck... We're going to have five Minotaurs, and they're going to be these massive ones right here. Let's go from the top of the list, I suppose. we got Perforos Bronze-Blooded, a 5-mana 7-6 Legendary God Minotaur. Uh, as long as your devotion to red is less than five, it isn't a creature. It gives other creatures you control haste, and then you can also pay three to uh, throw red creatures and artifacts um, into the field so that you can act it, um, use them with haste and... They get sacrificed at the end. So if we have a card stuck in our hand, it's one way can we can cheat it in anyway. We also have Sethron, Herloon General. I think actually, yes, Jumpstart wasn't out when I actually originally released this because Sethron was not a card I could add. And I'm glad I can add it now. It's a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield or another non-token Minotaur enters, you get to create a 2-3 red Minotaur creature token. So all of our creatures are going to be Minotaurs, thanks to the arcane adaptation when we throw them in with Warcry, uh, which means we're going to get several triggers of Sethron making Minotaurs, which is awesome. Uh, we do have Terror of the Peaks, which is one of our ways to finish off the game. Uh, a 5 mana 5-4 five, Flying Dragon Minotaur. Uh, spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks costs an additional 3 life to cast. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Which essentially means when we get all four of our creatures out, we're going to be triggering the Terror of the Peaks off of the other three that are in play. Other three are going to be usually Perforos, Sethron, and Angrath's Marauders. Angrath's Marauders being a 7-mana 4-4 four, four that says if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead, which means Angrath's Marauders is doubling the power of the Terror of the Peaks uh, targeted ETB trigger there. So for every creature that enters, like Angrath's Marauders, we're going to be dealing their power doubled. So Angrath's enters, it deals eight. Uh, Sethron enters, it deals eight. Sethron makes tokens, they enter, each of those tokens deals four. And then Perforos enters, he's going to enter as a creature as well because his devotion is going to be over five. There's no combination of four here that doesn't give you five devotion. Uh, so Perforos will enter as a creature and deal 14 with the Terror of the Peaks target, targeted trigger. That being said, if that doesn't kill them, 
We also have haste, which means we get to swing in with all that power again. So Marauders deals another additional eight through combat. Terror of the Peaks will deal 10 in the air, so a lot of evasion there. Sethron goes very wide with the Minotaurs, and it's going to deal masses there. We can even pay the two and red hybrids to give all of our Minotaurs plus one plus oh and menace, which gives them almost unblockable it also gives them haste as well which is another thing that is kind of relevant could be activating that to give perforos haste uh, if that does crop up i'm not sure if it does in today's video uh, maybe it does and i didn't notice um but you know it's a thing that's available there anyway and yeah we're running five cards here even though we can only use four mostly because this deck can obviously potentially draw these cards you don't really want to be casting them and you don't want to be drawing them we have a lot of ways of putting them back into our deck though so that we can get the right cards at the right time uh, but you really do want to prioritize putting these back into your deck whenever you can we've got a few ways we can do that we have two copies of fire prophecy which is a little bit of early game interaction with our opponent's creatures uh, three damage to a creature and then you put a card from your hand on the bottom of your life library and then draw a card so basically we replace a card we didn't want to have in our hand anyway something that was a pseudo mulligan in a sense we also, from Zendikar Rising, have Valakut's Awakening, which is a double-faced card which can act as a land to make sure that we hit our land drops. Hitting red is very important every single turn, uh, so we could use it that way. And if we've got some excess cards we don't want to see, or maybe we've drawn like three Deathbell or Warcries, we can throw several of them back using Valakut's Awakening to find the combo pieces we're needing. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of an RNG involved uh, since the cards you're going to draw are most likely going to be a pretty big mystery. Uh, so if you're bot bottoming these, you're probably not going to see them again. We don't have a way of shuffling our deck, I don't believe. So once they're at the bottom, they're staying there, uh, short of, you know, comboing off with Death Bella Walker anyway, um, which is kind of nice. It gives you that certainty and that increased likelihood that the second Valakut's Awakening is not going to screw you over. We also have Thirst for Meaning as well, uh, which allows us to draw three and then discard two unless you discard an enchantment card. The only enchantment we have in our deck is going to be Arcane Adaptation. Um, being that it is our kind of build around piece that's kind of nice but it has a little bit of redundancy it doesn't stack so the second third and fourth cards of these are going to be pretty useless so being able to discard one card being the arcane adaptation you don't need is kind of nice otherwise you just discard two cards which is going to be hopefully just like uh, excess lands or cards that are not that useful in the matchup something like maybe pact of negation so speaking of pact of negation that's another way that we can interact with our opponent uh, i've been um, going back and forth between two Pact of Negations and two Sweltering Suns. In the end, I went for three Suns because I've noticed there's a lot more aggro at the moment. Uh, but if you're expecting a lot of people to counter your Death Bella Warcry, probably want to go down one Sweltering Suns and then go up to a second Pact of Negation. This is a free counter spell uh, as far as uh, our combo is concerned. It says at the beginning of your next upkeep, you pay uh, five mana, and if you don't, you lose the game. Uh, we're likely not to be casting this card without losing, uh, or without winning, sorry, on the turn that we cast it. So if we went for our war cry, our opponent tries to counter it, we can pact. And if our opponent doesn't answer it, we resolve this and we win. That's kind of the idea. Otherwise, it doesn't resolve and we lose. That's usually how it's going to go anyway, so uh, if you do go up against a little bit of control with this list, then go down a Sweltering Suns, go up a Pact of Negation, otherwise I kind of like it where it is, just one Pact to help you fight through counter magic uh, once you've kind of built up your hand is pretty sweet. Control tends to be quite slow, so it'll give you plenty of time to find the pieces you need anyway. And yeah, I think that's essentially the deck... Uh, in a nutshell, we do have three temples to scry cards to the bottom that we don't need. Uh, a very heavy skew in red, because it might be a little bit obvious red is uh, pretty important. We do have four pathways, should be noted as well. Nine times out of ten, you want to put this pathway on red. Uh, you only need one blue pip in the entire game. Uh, most of the time, unless you're planning on thirsting into an arcane adaptation. But you should naturally have excess blue mana anyway, since most of the lands in our deck are actually dual lands. It's probably where the budget gets broken, most of all. I mean, that that being said, now that I look at it, there's, there's no budget at all. Nearly everything in this deck's rare. But, you know, that's, that's Magic the Gathering for you, I suppose. But yeah, anyway, your pathways want to be on red because you want to be able to get that triple red Death Bella War Cry and things like that. Uh, but yeah, Iron Crag Feet is our way of getting to Death Bella. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, it's a four mana, add seven, and then you can only cast one more spell this turn. So you use this, go up to eight, and um, 
So you do this, sorry, when you've got excess mana, so you want five mana in total. You spend four of it on Iron Crag Feet, which gives you seven, and then the last remaining mana gives you the eight you need for the Death Bell of Warcry, and then you go right for it. Um, but yeah, if you do enjoy the content anyway, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, all that jazz, and without further ado, let's carry on forward, shall we? This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below, or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. All right, we're in. We've got all the tap lands in the world, uh, but we've essentially got everything we need to eventually win the game. Arcade Adaptation needs to come down on three. Valakut's Awakening can find us our Death Bell of Warcry, and Iron Crag Feet can get us it on turn four. So, we just need an untapped land. We need Iron Crag, uh, Death Bell of Warcry, sorry. And to not die really quickly, which Storm's Wrath can help us with. Once just mulled quite a fair bit. Mm, down to five. Alright, so we're going to leave with the temple. We're looking for that untapped land. We found it. Fantastic. Hmm. Ketria Triome. Okay. So we could drop down the glass pool mimic now that it's kind of in our hand. It's not really doing us that many favors. Um. We'd have to shock ourselves next turn if we did. Um, as opposed to not shocking ourselves now and potentially just naturally drawing a fourth land. Eh, let's do that. Alright, Ketria Triumph for our opponent is the Teema one. And they've got a Valakut's Awakening of their own as well. We drew a Mind Stone. So do we actually go for... Hmm. They're playing the Neo Storm list. So we need to kind of race them. We can't really turn four our opponent necessarily with this hand. But we do have a few dead cards that Valakut's Awakening could turn into something else. So I think maybe we pass and we just Awakening on their end step. Get rid of Mind Stone, Storm's Wrath, Glass Pool Mimic. There's a Shimmer. All right, might as well just go for it now. So that's going to be useless. That's going to be useless, as is that as well. And we're going to draw four cards off of that. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order. I guess we'll do it like that. Oof. Okay, well, we did get a Pact of Negation, which can help. It allows us to counter the Stormcaller if they don't have it this turn coming anyway hmm could just play down a angrath's marauders seems like a bad idea let's just go with the arcane adaptation name minotaur Ooh, oh god spelling minotaur if they don't win right here we have the way of stopping them from winning I've never seen them whiff like this. I whiff like this all the time when I play the deck, but our opponent won't. Into Neo Form, into win the game. Yep, there you go. Alright, we'll make them play it out, because there's obviously a chance that they've got uh, their Tuk Tuk Rubble Fort, or whatever it's called, uh, in their hand, and they can't haste. And we could technically win off of that. Unlikely, but... Play to that out, I suppose. So close as well. If they'd have just waited one more turn, if they hadn't had the nut draw, we could have packed the storm caller. Bought ourselves a couple of turns, probably. So we only needed to survive this turn, draw into Death Bell of Warcry off the top, and we win. So there's our extra combat step, and no haste. Oh, now that Storm's Wrath that we left behind. That's just really mean, isn't it? 
<laughs> that Storm's Wrath I said we wouldn't need. Because usually they just go haste and they swing and you you don't actually get a chance to wipe the board. Right here, we would have loved the chance. Um, so, I mean, let's just see. Yeah, I mean, we there's a Storm's Wrath. We wouldn't have found what we needed anyway, so we were going to lose. Which is a shame. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, this thing likes to force you to discard personally now. And yeah, so what they do is they swing in with everything, even if they didn't kill us, they got an extra combat step with the Celebrant, so... Uh, rubble force in their hand by the looks of things. Ain't that a shame. If that Storm's Wrath had been a top deck, our opponent actually loses on the spot unless they have a Pact of Negation, which we can actually Pact back. So, close game, even though it didn't look it. Alrighty then, we're in, we have our entire combo in our hands, we have a way of wiping the board to buy ourselves some time, a temple to hopefully ramp us up finding a mine stone or something like that. Yep, gonna keep this one. See if our opponent is in the mood to let us get to turn four. So we're gonna go with the temple. Uh, thirst for meaning. I'm just gonna bottom it to be honest, it does dig for us, but on turn three I'm gonna play the arcane adaptation. So I'm not really going to care too much about that. It's mono reds. Yay. Turn four. Unlikely. All right. Well, we do get to go steam vents untapped. Turn three, arcane adaptation. Turn four, storm's wrath. Turn five, iron crag feet into Sto death bell of war cry. So if we live till turn five, which the storm's wrath gives us a reasonable chance of doing. And we'll have to see. Uh, so we want to name Minotaur. So let's do that. So Ironcrag Feet unfortunately only makes uh, seven mana. If we'd have drawn a Mind Stone on turn two, we'd have been able to go off and win next turn, which is hilarious. However, our next turn is just going to have to be Storm's Wrath, and we're going to have to hope to draw a land, I guess. So we have that fifth mana. So take five. Hope our opponent doesn't play Anax, but they do go into this board. That's basically what we want to see from our opponent. Wow. Well, we do get the Steam Vents, but I think we are forced at this point just to Storm's Wrath. And if we can't pay for the Steam Vents, we're just going to lose. Bone Crusher, my face. Down to 11. I don't think they can 11 us here. They play Bone Crusher, that's fine. Yeah, they definitely can't win. Which means we win. We would draw Mirog, but we don't really need Mirog. Alright, pay two. Iron Crag Feet. Makes seven mana. One mana remaining. Eight mana for the War Cry. Up to four Minotaur cards, please. Uh, we're gonna go with. I think this is going to be a Sethron, Terror of the Peaks, Marauders, and Perforos play. I think that's the plan. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, face, face, face. Make some two threes. Face. That's four damage. That's four damage. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me get that stack open, shall we? Because our opponent's not going to let it play it out because they don't like more than thirty seconds worth of gameplay. Uh, so this is four damage, and then this is a minotaur for four damage as well. Another minotaur for four damage, and then we're dealing uh, eight damage here, dealing fourteen damage here, and eight damage here. And also we have haste with every one of our creatures, so we also get to swing on the off chance that they're not <laughs> absolutely, utterly obliterated on turn five. But yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what we want to do. Um, Morog's kind of fun, because if we don't win the game and we've kind of, you know, waited on our Perforos so we don't have haste, uh, then we get to potentially make a land drop the turn after and get a uh, double uh, combat step, which is kind of fun. Completely unnecessary. You could probably just do uh, Combat Celebrant, to be honest. Might even be better. It is better, technically. Uh, but 
you know, it's Morog. It's a Minotaur. I've got to, got to pick something with my Death Bella Warcry that looks Minotaur-like, right? <laughs> Okay, we're in against the Lurus list. Uh, this hand's sketchy, but I think it's okay. We don't really need the Pact of Negation in a matchup like our opponents, which I'm assuming is just a uh, black red uh, Arcanist. But with the Nut Draw, we should probably win against them. Pact of Negation just gives us some discard to work with. What we really don't want to see from our opponent is turn one Thought Seize, turn two Arcanist. Turn three, swing in Thought Seize, you know, because obviously hand disruption against combo decks is just depressingly <laughs> powerful. So, yeah, it's, uh, it'd be one of those games. The kids call them a non-game, is what they call them. Perhaps if we draw a Sweltering Suns for that kind of uh, strategy, though, we might be okay. So our opponent has a Fable Passage. That almost certainly means that they are actually on Black Red Arcanist. Because they want to fill their deck for Croxa. Oh, the graveyard, sorry. So, black or red for our opponent. It's black. Okay. And red. Look at that. Lurus and Fable Passage. <laughs> Can pretty much point out an entire archetype. That's impressive and sad at the same time, I suppose. All right, so where do we go from here, opponent? I assume they're wondering whether or not they want to, yeah, play down something like Croxa, which we're going to allow. We're going to discard our Pactum Negation. Not likely to play that in a meaningful way here. Oh boy, that's a Death Bell War Cry. Ooh, okay. Well, I suppose to avoid getting Thought Seized, I should go with Arcane Adaptation on Minotaur now. And then I think we drop down Valakut Stoneforge here. Because we're going to need it as a land. Most likely. Thirst of Meaning's just looking for Iron Crag Feet now. If we top deck it, we just win. Though the likelihood is that they're going to make me discard, so it's probably unrealistic that a top deck will make me win because I'll want to get rid of probably something like the Riverglide Pathway here. Take three off of a Croxer maybe if they've got a spare. Mm. I think most ways they can interact with me will mean that I don't have the win next turn. Well, that's fine. Stitcher Supply is okay. Ish. It's fueling the turn four crocs or anyway. Uh, it's a spare death bellow war cry, which is okay as it is just extra discard fodder. Fire prophecy is fine as well. So we'll get rid of the mindstone and the pathway. Play the Sulphur Falls, and then we can put one of these war cries to the bottom with a Fire Prophecy on a better target. At least we have, like, Arcanist Removal now, or Young Pyromancer. Something like that. Their hand is typically full of, like, creature interaction, like Village Rites, and uh, Claim the First Bonds, and things like that. Claim to Fames. Lots of things that they can't actually make good use of right now. Necessarily. I don't think I want to prophecy the supplier if they offered it. Alright, so there's an Arcanist and a Young Pyromancer, so if they go land claim, I can prophecy it back into the trash. Just a Dreadhorde Arcanist. Alright, so we're going for the win here. We're going to try and turn this Warcry into an Iron Crag feat. If we manage to do that, we win. We didn't. So we can go Mindstone. One, two. Um, so next turn, they've got a... W yeah, we can't play this Mind Stone, I don't think. We need something to discard. And if we just played down the Mind Stone and we went for the draw, 
if we drew iron crag feet we'd have to discard either the war cry or the feet and we don't want to do that either of those so what we're going to do is we're just going to crack our mind stones here twice i think that's the plan at least because a land drop will allow us to war cry and finding the war cry will allow us to win So there's Claim. You haven't found Thoughtseize yet, right? No. Okay. Because otherwise they could go for the Fame here. I guess actually they've got three mana to play with. Uh, they're not really going to do anything with that unless they've got something in their hand right now. Their only black mana is on a Phyrexian Tower that forces them to sack their Arcanist. So they are going to go for the Fame. They can hit us for three and cast a card from their graveyard. What they're going to choose to do. Don't know if they'd go for a village rights. Maybe they're looking for hand disruption though. So maybe they want to dig for that if they know what we're doing. Yeah, they're just going to hit us for three. I think that's probably on their part correct. If they don't know what we're doing, it's certainly correct. But if they're very... Very aware of what we're... Of what we have in mind. Oh, dear. No! Why did you slow roll that? You could have done that pre-combat. Arcanist and double thought seized. My hand would be completely empty. But whatever. We draw. Land. And... Storm's Wrath, <laughs> Spare War Cry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Um, well, we can't let them hit us again with Arcanist, so we're going to dump that. Phyrexian Tower is not a swamp, so they can't just straight up Croxer us here unless they play a swamp. And we have Discard Fodder with the Mind Stone. Screw you, opponent. Actually, screw you. You are the worst. Who hurt you? Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that's so tilting. <laughs> oh no. Alright, fine. Oh my god. That's a stinger, is that chat? So I think it's going to be Luros Arcanist, which means Arcanist can thought seize my Iron Crag feet. So I need this Mind Stone to hit a Death Bellow War Cry, which is currently on a 5% chance to hit. I'm gonna go for a Young Peasy instead. Alright, well, let's have a look. Lands miss. Temple miss. They didn't get the Arcanist, so... Got that going for us. Uh, this doesn't mean I can win next turn. So I think I'm just going to have to bottom it, because what's likely to happen now is that they'll go for Crocs or I'll discard the pathway. Uh, I don't know if they could fame me at that point to get rid of the Iron Crag feet. Black, black. Uh, black, black, red, red. They've got Phyrexian Tower. So they'd need like a mountain to fame me with the Crocs for a double discard. This is painful. It's at this moment you realized you should probably concede. I mean, I'll play it out. I'll play my land and, you know, we might just, like, hard cast a war cry, but we still have to find one of the other two in my deck. And that's probably not happening. We've got more thought seizes with their pyromancer. So, oh, their dreadhorde arcanist. So I can't hold anything in hand anymore. Uh, right. Well, three for five, six, seven. So I need our opponent to not play Croxer, so I can play this Sulphur Falls, so that I have the mana to hard cast Death Bell or Warcry off the top. That's what I need. You also have Spike Field Hazard for an extra point. Yeah. 
I think they're going Croxer here. Let's be realistic. A normal person would go Croxer. Priest of Forgotten Gods. Swing. Gonna go for Village Rights over Thought Seas. So what, now you know that I don't have good top decks, you're just gonna draw some of your own? <sighs> God damn it. I deserve to win now. You know I do. Opponent's run has been insane. It's my turn. Top deck war cry. Here we go. One time. Unless they discard the sulfur falls, then it doesn't matter. One time. 5% odds. Two in the deck. Deck size of 39. Rip. Next game. God damn it. All right, we're in. We do have a card that we don't really appreciate in our hand in the form of Marauders. We've not really had that kind of uh, misfortune though. Everything else in this hand is pretty good and we do have a thirst for meaning to dump the Marauders as a free discard anyway. So I'm looking forward to this hand. It seems exciting. All right, so we're gonna go Sulphur Falls. Next turn we can do the thirst for meaning. So it's Gruul Aggro. All right, so we are looking for our fourth land so we can Storm's Wrath. It looks like it's going to be pretty decent Storm's Wrath, to be fair. Ooh, there's also a Mind Stone. We don't have uh, our Arcane Adaptation at this point either, so that's something to bear in mind. Uh, we're probably just going to get Ember Cleave next turn and lose. I think we need to guarantee we can Storm's Wrath. I think that's the important part here. I just don't know if we can really beat what they rebuild with unless we find another board wipe and they don't have every haste creature in their deck. Well, going to seven and we can wipe the board and make a land drop for the turn as well, which is surprisingly important. Okay. There's a Ronus. We have our land. We could Death Bellow Warcry and get Sethron and Marog out of our deck. Is that good? Three, four, five, six. If we were to then draw a land, we'd be able to Marauders and then all of our damage sources would be doubled. And the land drop would... Oh, actually, we'd have to do the land drop post-combat for the additional combat step. I kind of think that you do. Do you take that shot? Let's do it. For science. This is a for science kind of thing. All right, so we get Sethron, we get Marog. They both enter. They make some two threes that we can use as blockers as a worst-case scenario. Uh, Ronas can't attack unless they've got a four power creature, but they've got plenty of those in their deck, something like Gruul Spellbreaker, for example. They can Domri's Ambush me as well. Well, there would be the land. What do we do now? We can menace up with Sethron. This gives Trample. So I kind of feel like we're just dead. In general, we're going to need something a little bit... Oh, that's Arcan Adaptation. Is it too late for that now? Um... I don't know. I truly don't know. It probably feels a little bit too late. Two, four, five, six. This would be seven. I'd still need my eighth mana. Yeah, I think it's too late for Arcane Adaptation. I think we've given up on that plan. Uh, let's go Temple, see what's on top. 
Because we can start hard casting our stuff now. We can play our Perforoses and our Terror of the Peaks. And we can pump and give Menace here if we wanted to as well. I think we might, we might wait. That's a QB. Tis a QB. So that means Ronus can attack and so can Questing Beast. Um, I can give plus one, plus O, oh, so I can block with a token. I have to block one. Is it Sethron that I should be blocking with, or is it a token? I guess I could always block with the two... Uh, Minotaur tokens. I just don't know where that's going to get me, though. Though, with one token, what am I really doing with that as well? So I'd go to one here. Hmm. It's only like 12 damage with the Marauders out. I don't have haste. It's not a Minotaur, so it doesn't make me a 2-3. I think you've just got a double block. Hope for a better set of cards than we have right now. My hope there was that they actually went with something like a 3-3 three, three, that they could then pump with Ronus to try and enable it, and then I could fire Prophecy in response. Naturally, that didn't occur. I'm just not sure what I'm digging for anymore. That's the problem. That being said, short of them having a creature... I do have the attacking power right now. Hmm. It's probably mountain here, actually. Swing for eight. This can't block if they don't have a creature as well, so that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Ah. That's the problem. They're going to eat to make it a four, so now I have to block the Ronus. They could have just given it, like, Trample as well. With the three mana they had remaining. So now I'm forced to block. And I don't believe I have any outs. Uh, well, let's dig for them, I suppose. Any number to the bottom? None of these are good enough. I need... I don't know. I mean, Storm's Wrath's basically the only thing I can draw, and it kills my own creatures, so... Yeah, this Storm's Wrath. So, swing. They take the damage. I Wrath because I have to. Play the land, because I might as well. Two, three, then one, two, three. Ooh, okay. What about if I was to survive into a Death Bellow War Cry? I'd get Terror of the Peaks. Ah, that's enough for lethal, though. Hypothetically, though, I would get Terror of the Peaks, Perforos. And that would be it. And Perforos wouldn't be a creature because I don't have the devotion. So, yeah, I don't think I have an out here. Unfortunately reasonably close. We did, for science, lose this game, I would say. Though I'm not sure if we didn't test science, we would have actually, like, had enough time to actually win the game proper with our arcane adaptation combo. But now we know what it happens when, uh, when we don't use our full combo to the maximum extent. We kind of get a reasonably uh, capable blocking board, and then our opponent draws everything they need to destroy it. So, yeah. Okay, we're in. We've got the Death Bell of Warcry. We have a Scry with the Temple, a Tapland with Sulphur Falls, unfortunately. And a Fire Prophecy on two, so we can get rid of the Marauders. Yeah, this is a keepable one. 
It's got some reasonable control to it as well as a little bit of uh, potential deck fixing. That's a card I'm looking for technically, so we'll go for that. At the very least, we can do what we did last game and have a mediocre <laughs> Death Bella Warcry for two Minotaurs. Okay, opponent's going to lead with a Temple of Mystery. It's probably like Sultai Control or something like that. I think that's the usual Temple of Mystery deck these days. Yeah, well, that's miserable, isn't it? Uh, what's the odds that they play something I want to burn next turn? What's the odds that I have a 3-drop I want to play next turn? Uh, that's a problem. I think we'll go with the Sulphur Falls. I, I don't think this is the kind of deck that will play a 2-drop here. Rewarded? I'd kill a Llanowar Elves if they played it, to be fair. Okay, let's go Temple. We're looking for Arcane Adaptation. We're also looking to put any creature we find on the bottom. Hard casting them's not really what I have in mind. There's an Uro. So I can take this opportunity to actually put Angrath's Marauders on the bottom and redraw, and I think I will, because I don't think Fire Prophecy is really going to see anything else. So let's put the card we don't want to cast on the bottom, get a card we don't want to cast in our hand. I mean, as cards we don't want to cast are concerned, Terror is not the worst, I suppose. does mean if we uh, go for the au natural Death Bella Warcry, we can at least take advantage of its ETB trigger. Oh, baby. Well, we won't have to. Arcane Adaptation on Minotaur. Play the land on Mountain. And if we draw a land, we win. Drop our opponent running counter magic. They've got no cards in the yards for an Uro, which honestly would be exactly what I want to see from them. Less chance they have a counter spell, the better. So if they tap out here, we draw our land, we'll be really happy. 26 is not a life total they can survive our immense attack from. Maybe a growth spiral from them would be nice. I want the best for my opponent, but, you know, only under the condition that I get the best as well in return. Alright, well, let's give it a shot. Iron Crag Feet, they will not really want to be countering this card. They will want to, be to counter the card that comes after it. So them letting this resolve is not indic indicative of uh, a lack of counter spells. So still got to keep calm, casual. Opponent's... Wondering if they've lost, maybe? I don't know. Please don't quench me. Please don't Jwari disruption me, censor me, anything like that. Oh, baby, I think we won. Okay, so Angrath's Marauders, Sethron, Perforos, and Marog, please. Bring them on in. Make some hasty 2-3s, which are actually uh, four powered versions. And we got a nice board that our opponent can't really wipe in their colours. And if we drew a land drop off the top, then we have a double attack the following turn. Also, plus one, plus O oh from Marog as well. So. Minus 32. And that's the reason why we have extra creatures in our deck for the uh, Death Bella Warcry, just to make sure that we can absolutely maximise uh, the amount of value we get in play. So if we don't have the Perforos for the haste, then we want the Terror of the Peaks to give that ETB kill instead. Uh, but if we do have the Perforos, then we've got like our Marog for extra combat steps and the plus one plus oh. We've got our Sethron to combo with both uh, extra combat steps and the Terror ETB. And then the Marauders as well, just to cover the bases if our opponent has gained too much life because... You know, this is a lot of damage, but against a deck that gains lots of life, uh, not doubling this up can look pretty bad. But, you know, this looks pretty good, so it is what it is. All righty then, on the draw, we have a wipe on three. We have a way of putting the Marauders in the bin, as well as digging for new 
cards. I say in the bin, at the bottom of our deck. Our deck's absolutely uh, gorgeous. It's not trash at all. So <laughs> it wouldn't be considered putting it in the bin, would it? Uh, but yeah, this hand's... It's reasonable. It's got the, the card we're looking for. We need to find Arcane Adaptation and Iron Crag Feet, or we just delay the game until turn 8. It's one or the other. Uh, but yeah, this seems... This seems reasonably good. I don't think you throw this one away. Okay, opponent on seven cards. See what you got. Or lack thereof, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this deck amuses me quite a fair bit because I actually think it's, from a competitive standpoint, better than the mono black aggro deck I played yesterday. That one was, uh, it was a list. It was a list for sure. There was a time when that would probably be a tier one list, weirdly enough, but it ain't this time. Yeah, I think the reason why this deck is as competitive, air quotes, as it is, is mostly because of its uh, turn four kill potential. I think if your deck can't win on turn four, it's not worth playing in Historic. I think that's just kind of, unfortunately, the way this format is. Which locks out a lot of strategies. It's not one of those formats where you can just kind of have fun. And it's goblins. And this is the reason why you can't just have fun. Um, well, we do have the Sweltering Suns. So that is a silver lining. We can blow up our opponent's board. If Prospector's their way to get to Muxus, then uh, we can disrupt that slightly. And potentially win through it as well. We don't really mind... Uh, our opponent having goblin blockers with our combo. I don't need a second war cry. Any additional second of cards that aren't board wipes are honestly just going to get thrown back with Valakut's Awakening. But yeah, I mean, M Muxus has a way of winning on turn three, so that's a, it's an unlikely scenario, but turn four is not. So if you can't win by turn four, it means you're not going to beat Skirt Prospector and Muxus. By the way, ban Muxus. Hmm. So yeah, uh, basically we can make our land drop for the turn and our opponent can make theirs and play Muxus. That, that's honestly what we're looking at right now. Sweltering Suns is not fast enough. <laughs> that's that's the level that you should be looking at this card from. I might have honestly gone for something like Anger of the Gods. I'm not sure, actually. Probably not. Realistically, because I think the cycle is quite important on Smel Sweltering Suns. More than the Exile, maybe, is. Since we're a combo deck and we're fi trying to find certain pieces, anyway. So, yeah, they go land, they go Muxus, they win. If their Muxus is bad, I'm just gonna go Krenko. Oh, you sweet summer child. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, my child. <laughs> you you appear to have no cards in in play because you played Krenko instead of Muxus. Have you, have you ever heard of uh, Muxus? It's the, it's the card that wins you the game, and now they're on two mana, three mana. All right. Okay. War Chief. Puts them back into this. They're not out of the game. Should be very... Very straight with that. They're not out of the game. They could just play another Krenko. I think I would let them do that. I think I should progress my board, maybe. So, let's do Temple. And then Valakut's Awakening. Put that to the bottom, because that's not what we want to dig for. Valakut's Awakening, get rid of Marauders. I am going to need to Suns, and this is an Iron Crag Feet hand, so we're just going to discard one, draw two. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Don't kill me. I've got so much to live for. Conspicuous Snoop. All right, well, we know they're drawing a land. We know that this is brutal. I think it's better than letting our opponent see what's on top with Conspicuous Snoop and potentially activate using it. 
Uh, let's go pathway on mountain. Nine times out of ten, you want these pathways to be on red, uh, just because of the uh, restrictive nature of our deck's mana cost. And you've got plenty of islands in the deck anyway to make that happen. So we're going to go Mind Stone, Arcane Adaptation, and then we're going to win if we don't lose. Uh, we're going to name Minotaur. Pass the turn. And see what they've got. I think Land Muxus can win the game. It's just Matron, so I think they've just lost the game. They can go Matron, they can get a Conspicuous Snoop, or they can go get the Muxus if they know they've got the land. They're going to go with a Prospector, and that will not cut it here. There is nothing they can play here that I think that would get them out of it. So, you know, we win. Iron Crag Feet. We haven't made our land drop, have we? Oh, we haven't made our land drop. Oh, fantastic. We get to go the Mirag uh, extra combat step plan. Let's do that. Unless our opponent's uh, a big party pooper and scoops at this. You wouldn't do that, would you? Mirag for extra combat steps. Sethron for extra beasties. Perforos for extra haste. And uh, Terror of the Peaks to wipe their board. All right. So, 2-3, two, 2-3, three, two, three. <laughs> sit him there, hit him where it hurts. Can't gem palm anything meaningful here. Uh, this hits face. This hits face, don't scoop. Don't scoop, pipe pooper. Don't do it. All right, we have pointed the largest amount of damage at our opponent's creatures, by the way. Should be noted. So we can we can swing, and then we'd also get an extra land drop. We actually kind of just overkill our opponent. I don't I don't want to BM them necessarily, and they're not going to let me anyway. But yeah, that would be the extra combat step path which we uh, have been trying to showcase today as well. So we've managed the Terror of the Peaks with the Marauders double damage plan. We've got the extra combat step plan with Marauders here as well. We even went for the For Science No Adaptation plan, just to showcase what that has got today. So I like to think we've got a pretty reasonable uh, showing of what this deck can do and what this deck can't do at the same time. So yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this deck. This has been a it's a barrel of laughs to play this one. I honestly do uh, recommend playing it. Mostly though. Uh, you're going to have to invest some rares into Death Bella Warcry, so it's entirely up to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say this deck's good, uh, but it can win on turn four, and apparently it can beat goblins with the right hand, so can kind of got to keep that in mind. But, you know, our opponent didn't have the nut goblin hand, which most people usually do. Uh, but then again, we didn't have the nut hand either. We had to wait for a while for our arc adaptation, didn't we? So, you know... Uh, there was lots of wiping and controlling from us. We didn't get to play on curve like we would normally like to. So, you know, pretty good anyway. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It does help out the channel a great deal, and I really appreciate it. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. Uh, changes I would make to the deck is probably turn this Mirog into a combat celebrant, to be honest. I think it's just a little bit better. Then again, though, uh, this is a Minotaur you can hit with your Arcane Adaptation not being in play. So that's something to keep in mind. You could also do a proper um, non-Arcane Adaptation Minotaur version. I'm sure there's a few... Um, Minotaurs that are pretty decent, one of them being the Fanatic of Mogus as a like damage dealing beastie uh, based off of Devotion, that's one way you could do it. I don't know if that's better than Terror of the Peaks though. I don't know. I kind of feel like the combination we've got here minus Morog for Celebrant is probably the ideal uh, blue-red Death Bella version anyway, but yeah. Anyway, take care guys, like and subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.